Yeah, you know, I, I, I told him as he was walking by, I said, Jay, your uh, wish came true because Bart accidentally <laughs> said the wrong school on air. Of course, he recruited me when he was at Georgia prior, so I've had a, a great relationship with Jay for a long time now. I love joking around with him. It's hard to say no to. He's one of the he best is. recruiters he in really college is. gymnastics. At the time, of course, he was with Georgia, and they, of course, have a legendary program, 10 national championships. Jay hoping to bring the first NCAA title to LSU, which has three times been a runner-up in the last decade. Maybe the team that could do it this year. The great teams are Oklahoma, Cal. We've seen them all. Uh, UCLA. There's so many good teams this year, there's so much parity, but LSU has certainly the depth, more depth than they ever have, and their best shot at chance to win the championship. Yeah, I really think with all of the parity in gymnastics across the board, the winning teams are the ones that have the depth, you know? Both schools that we're watching tonight, LSU and Alabama, have had pretty serious injuries, but they've also had athletes who seamlessly go in their place, and that's the key to a championship team. The key to success is beam, of course. Many college meets come down to who can stay on the beam. And LSU, Sierra Ballard, really well known for her leadership in that leadoff role on beam. Yeah, she re she's reliable. And you're going to notice the way that she works beam is aggressive and attack mode. And I believe that that produces, that mentality produces the best beam work. She just lands on the beam which is amazing and really beneficial to the rest of the beam lineup. Now the senior from Mendel, Louisiana. Typically lead off on beam and floor for this team. phenomenal meet but they played tight on this event right here but you can tell just from the fight in this landing they're gonna bring it tonight <laughs> lsu three times this year at home has been over 198 which is a huge score a championship score alabama only once this year over 198 and it was last week in their dual meet with georgia they're trailing now by almost seven tenths of a point but this is an outstanding event for Alabama and Maddie Malagora. We saw her struggle on bars in the last rotation, only scoring an 8-4, an opportunity for her here. Yeah, but head coach Ashley Johnson told us that this team is a comeback story, so it's almost fitting to their theme and narrative that they had a mistake early on, and they're trying to come back here, Mark. more gymnastics this will be thrilling there's sierra brooks of michigan they're currently the seventh ranked team in the country they will be taking on number one oklahoma at the lloyd noble center in norman oklahoma right after we're off the air here this is number nine versus number two so we have two top 
10 matchups in NCAA gymnastics in three full hours of primetime coverage here on the ESPN network. Alexis Jeffrey coming up on beam now after Sierra Ballard, a predictable 9825. She just money in that spot. Yeah, she does a really good job getting them going in the right direction. But speaking to head coach Jay Clark, he mentioned them having a little bit of trouble in this two spot right here, trying to find that consistent lineup person. It's, Alexis is so solid and consistent on bars that they're really hoping she brings that here to the beam lineup as well. Nice, gentle handspring layout. You know, I think it's interesting to note that huge standing front tuck. The music is blaring right now. It is extremely loud in the PMAC. Usually teams turn the volume down a bit on balancing, but not here at LSU. Oh! A little off center on the landing, but she is like a cat. I am so impressed that she can find the landing out of anything. Standing front tuck, very difficult. Not many people do that in the NCAA. Look, she's a little off-center, but it doesn't matter with Alexis. She finds the landing no matter what. That is a key athlete you want in the position. She gets a couple of notes from Ashley Natt, the former All-American here at LSU. Jeffrey, five times in the beam lineup, 995 two weeks ago. Now, Ella Burgess, after Maddie Walagora got Alabama off to a great start with a 9.875 in this third of four rotations. Open double pike. Just a fun floor team. You can't help but smile with her infectious face throughout this routine. And it's her first year in the floor lineup as a fifth year senior. Impressive. Missouri in a losing effort she delivered a spectacular almost magical beam routine to score a perfect 10 already two tens in her young career that was through four meets of the season already two tens big aspirations and expectations around Connor McLean and the future she could have in college gymnastics. Yeah, I mean, head coach Jay Clark gave such an amazing compliment to her, not just as a gymnast, but as a person. He said, there hasn't been any other freshman except maybe Katie Heenan, so gymnastics fans out there might remember standout Georgia gymnasts that have been as impactful as Connor as a freshman. Not only as an athlete and a contributor to scores, but already blossoming as a leader on this program as well. Yeah, they said that she's spoken up in key moments, even when the team didn't want to hear it. She felt comfortable voicing that. And you notice that every time she finished her skill, she finishes in high releve, where her heels are off the beam. That's just a textbook wolf jump, maybe the best in the entire country. Barely 
wobbled. I mean, geez. That's the mark of a cool head because some gymnasts might panic and, in fact, overcorrect. Yeah, and I always say you want to adjust and not react. She did a nice job of that, but this is really what is so outstanding, and she's above that 180 mark on both of her leaps. Difficult leap combination, and that's what's impressive to me about a lot of these LSU gymnasts. Is not only are they doing big gymnastics, but they're doing it with great execution as well. Jay Clark knows his team is in the driver's seat as the judges are conferring about the score for Ella Burgess. In dual meet competition, there are two judges. They average the score between these two judges, and these two judges came in at 9.45 and 9.75. That is a big difference between the scores. They're analyzing things like difficulty, combinations, connection. You mentioned the stumble towards the end of the routine. Yeah, she stumbled on the end of the routine, but, you know, also the requirement is the leap combination. So did she get the leaps and the, the rotation all the way around to get credit for that? These are all the things that the judges look for in those routines. Sunday, we've got a women's basketball triple header at noon, number one, South Carolina. Looks to remain undefeated as they square off with Tennessee. And two Eastern, number 17, Notre Dame host, number 22, Louisville. And then we cap off the afternoon with Duke and North Carolina. You catch all the action on ESPN and streaming live on the ESPN app. Ella Burgess, we used to seeing her contribute on beam. Judge is still calibrating her score. There have been a lot of question marks about judging this year in college gymnastics. There have been a lot of inconsistencies and a lot of the focused fan base not exactly happy. Typically the scores have been sort of through the roof, but when it's hard to calibrate a score when there was a mistake. Yeah, it's, it's really tough. I think a lot of the times maybe the judges get caught up with how loud the arena is, how big the atmosphere is, and I know, Bart, you and I have had a lot of offline discussions <laughs> on what we think is going on here, but you know, it's good to see the level of gymnastics continuing to grow, so they're looking to find a scoring system that best supports it, and I'm not sure we've landed on it quite yet. I think you're exactly right. Now, in the postseason at the conference <laughs> championships, they use four judges. They throw out the high and low and average two in the middle. By the time we get to the national championship, we even have a better system where there are six judges high and low thrown out and you average four scores in the middle. So typically the teams that walk away with the national title are the right teams. Yeah, I would 100% agree with you, Bart. At the postseason, it tends to even out a little bit. Cam Machado looks like they came up with a score for Ella Burgess. It's a 9-6. Seven five was the leadoff score for Maddie Walagora. Open double back, nice smooth landing. Beautifully done those wolf turns. She's really known for that skill. The senior from Pennsylvania, eight times in the lineup on floor this year. Last week, her best score of the season, 9.95. And Alabama was lights out in their dual meet with Georgia on the floor. One of their program best scores a week ago. done. She's been so solid on floor this entire season. 
She starts off strong with a roundup back handspring double back. When I say a clean landing, that means both of her feet were planted, and then she steps back for no deduction on the lunge. Kaya Johnson now in front of an adoring home crowd. You mentioned earlier that LSU was juggling with their lineup a bit. They were concerned about the number two spot. Well, today, Alexis Jeffrey got a 9-9 in that second spot. So, LSU on track for another big team score here at home. After last week having their highest away score at Florida. Very powerful back handspring layout. You know, you talk about the question marks in that two spot. There is never any question mark about Kaya Johnson. In fact, you know, she flies under the radar because she is so predictable according to the coaches. And that's what you want with athletes in the back half of your lineup. The only question you should have when these athletes go up is, are they gonna get a 10 or not? Kaya Johnson herself, eight tens in her career, two of them on balance beam. Most of her tens come on floor, where LSU will be in the final rotation tonight. when you have straight knees, but that can't bring layout, quick to that finish position. And check out the landing, she stands up right away, which sometimes indicates that she's gonna move her feet, but does a good job squeezing every bone in her body not to move in those crucial moments. You're allowed to land with your feet slightly apart as long as you bring your heels together without moving the balls of your feet. Isn't that how the judges look for it? Yeah, that's how close your feet need to be. They don't need to land together, but you need to land and scoot those heels almost like Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. I was waiting for it. Hard things. All right, Lily Hudson. Got a 10 this year. this year, 995s on floor. You know, we talk often about LSU's brand of gymnastics. It's big. I think Alabama has always been big on the floor. They have big, high-flying tumbling skills. Very impressive to the judges and the fans. Yeah, I really appreciate, you know, their performance quality and be able to do that big gymnastics you're referencing, but also controlling those landings, which sometimes is tough to do. in the country of the national standings. Their highest ranking event is on even bars. Only 15th on floor, but that's because they've shown a little bit of inconsistency. Last year, week, first time over 198, which is a championship level score for this team that has won many championships. Finishes, double back, had so much power. I wanted her to open up. You see that front feet, front foot slide back. That's gonna be a deduction there the end of her routine. I never experienced having too much power at the end of the routine. <laughs> Usually you're sucking wind, I'm just saying. Sometimes when you're tired, you just hang on a little longer. Maybe that's what happened with Lily. Here's Haley Bryant. Nia Johnson had a 9-8-7-5. This last half of the lineup, Johnson, Bryant, and Finnegan are otherworldly. Very light on the beam.
you know, an athlete like Kaya is aggressive and sharp and quick to that finish. And Haley, on the other hand, is almost elegant the way that she lands, really soft on the beam. And that's the style that works for her. You can do any style you want. You want to pick the one that is most natural to you. 13 tens in her career. Good save there. She's gotten tens on every event. Won't get one tonight after that little bobble, but interestingly, the, the gymnastic community, they call that, if you get a 10 on every event, it's called a gym slam. She's done it, a career gym slam. And it's really because of those landings right there. She doesn't have many built-in deductions, meaning knee bends, flexed feet. She doesn't really have many of that. It's really these minor waffles right there hanging on to it. Let's see one more time. Look at her toes. They're completely off the beam, and she's really utilizing her shoulders and her hips to stay on the beam there. Great work from Haley Bryant for that save. Standing front somersault. It's incredible athleticism and balance. Luisa Blanco coming after it. Lily Hudson had a 9.875. So the score that Alabama needs to replace is the 9.6 for Burgess. The two best all-arounders on the team, Blanco and Gladio, come up now. Yeah, watch this first path bar. She's actually upgrading it. Her hands bring a double full punch run. That is so difficult to add a punch run out of a double twist. They actually said that it's easier for her because she has so much power that adding a front tuck is minimizing her deduction. I like the point you made there because these teams are so far into the season. They're literally fine-tuning routines, even changing skills or combinations to maximize scores. Yeah, and, and I think it's just impressive the fact that the, the, some of these athletes are adding difficulty <laughs> to help them when they're fatigued. It's been a long season. Luisa Blanco is a fifth year. There's so many reasons it's impressive to me. things off. I mean, extremely difficult routine. Another job well done from Luisa Blanco. So she's going to do a front handspring. Two twists into a punch run directly into that lunge position. And that's the final pass. More combination work, which I always found to be a little bit more challenging than the powerful skills. It requires a little bit more precision. Here is anchor competitor Aliyah Finnegan, who will compete for her mother's home country of the Philippines in the Olympics in Paris this summer. Coming after Haley Bryant, finessed her way to a 9925. Yeah, she's just such a natural beam worker. Check out this triple series. Hansford layout, layout. It's the rhythm for me. It's the perfect amount of push from both of her feet into each layout. But mostly for Aaliyah, it's her arm position. So when she does her skills, I want you to look at her arms. You can see she puts them right out in front of her to help her balance. You want each arm to mirror each other to optimize your balance. Didn't quite adjust quick enough in the air on that front aerial. She's doing all around you. This has been struggling with some wrist issues this year, so we're not seeing her in the uneven bars, therefore not the all around. Perhaps we'll see her at the postseason four events for the LSU Tigers. Yeah, check out 
this triple series. Legs are straight, toes are pointed all the way through. Perfect arm position. Stunning. Gabby Gladio will be the anchor competitor for Alabama in this third of four rotations. Two nine eight seven fives for Hudson Walagora. And another 9875 comes in for Luisa Blanco. Watch how high she gets on this path. Lots of difficulty. She doesn't even grab her leg. Most gymnasts have to grab to help generate enough rotation. Not Gabby. <laughs> with deceptive power. The coaching staff says she's kind of like a pogo stick. She just gets off the ground so quickly. I guess there's no substitute for quick twitch muscle fibers. There really isn't, and she clearly has that very naturally, but something that she has had to work on is the performance quality, but the coaches have been really impressed with how that's been improving throughout this season. defying gravity on those leaps and jumps, the tumbling passes, really incredible. Amelia Hundley, the former Florida gymnast, congratulating her. She's on the coaching staff now at Alabama. Opens with that difficult two flips, one twist. You see that four inch mat, and that's not a deduction, just helps take away a little bit of the sting in the middle of the season, saving bodies. <laughs> All right, coming up, Sam and I will check out our news and notes around the conference and look at the SEC Gymnast of the Week and get you ready for number seven Michigan and number one Oklahoma when we come back to Baton Rouge.